I'm using the Dragon Pixie Rainbow Cake by Silly Farm and I've loaded up my sponge and I'm gonna start to apply that over my forehead, covering most of my forehead with this split cake. And when you do this, you just wanna pat back and forth. You can always manipulate your sponge to go over certain areas to get better coverage as I am doing here. And now I'm pinching the sponge together and I'm going underneath my eye on both sides and then I'm just gonna connect the purple on the outside to create more of a mask. Of all the colors in face painting world, purples and blues, sometimes dark blues, don't blend very well, so you might have to go over them a few times to get good coverage, which I am doing here. Now I'm taking a filbert or chisel brush, which is one of my favorite brushes in the world, and I'm gonna show you why. You can make a very, very thin line and a point with this brush or a very, very thick line to fill in. So if we're doing things like the Batman mask, this is perfect for me. I'm going to show you how I do it. I start in the middle, use the filbert brush to create the top face of my Batman. I turn it to the side to create the ears. And then I pull my loops up and around to a nice tip on both sides. to start the wing of my Batman, and then I drag the tip of my filbert brush back down to create the outside wing and the outside of the mask, and then I pull it right back up, loop over my eyebrow to connect them, and this is why I use a filbert brush. When I go to fill in, I flip it around, and I use the thick part of my filbert to fill in the mask really quickly. So again, I have my filbert brush on the side, curving it around down, ending on a nice peak, kind of lift up on your brush to get that nice thin line with the filbert. I'm trying to make these as even as possible on myself as well. So pulling that back down over my eyebrow and then to fill in, it's three, four strokes tops to fill in with that filbert and you're done. I love using a filbert for this. And of course, even this out, usually if you're doing this on a child and you're standing in front of them, you'll get it pretty even the first time. On myself, it was a little hard, but I think I got it. So then I also create a V going down my nose to finish the mask off and try to end it at a nice tipping point. Now I'm going to go back in with black and I'm just going to re-wet and reapply into the main areas of my mask because I want to add glitter. So when your paint's nice and wet and sticky, go ahead and spray some glitter on. I find girls really like this and smaller boys, but if you have an older boy in your chair, ask before you put glitter on because sometimes they don't like it. And now I'm taking this stencil. It is number 1206 and I'm going to add some dots on the bottom of my mask going over that color on the bottom just to create that comic book look. And this is a great stencil for all your, you know, Spider-Man and Batman masks. It just adds a lot of quick detail. And then on the top, I'm just going to, with black, do a moon and some stars and starbursts and dots just to create a night sky. And I'm going to add a few white highlights as well. If you decide to add white highlights, I would use a liner brush or something quite small so that the highlights don't overwhelm the mask. And if the edges bother you where your split cake kind of bleeds out under the black of the mask, you can certainly take a wet wipe and clean that up. Honestly, at an event that's busy, I would never, ever, ever do this step. However, doing it on myself, I did notice it in the camera, so I cleaned it up a bit. So there you go. There's my super easy Batman. I do a lot of these at events, and I hope this design helps you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.